If you're a Unity developer, you're probably looking for a different engine right about now, and Unreal, like we have here, might seem like a really good option, but you've heard that C++ is very scary to work with. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's really not all that bad. As a matter of fact, with all the work Unreal here has done for you, their implementation of C++ is practically just spicy C sharp. When you hear C++, you think you have to deal with memory management and the like all by yourself. And unlike C Sharp, it doesn't have any garbage collection, meaning that if you fuck up any little thing in your code, you create a memory leak and your whole game's performance goes to hell. While that is true for vanilla C++, Unreal itself here has proper garbage collection systems built in. So here's a few little things that we're going to go through that you might want to know moving from C Sharp and Unity to C++ and Unreal. Pointer variables, like we have right here. These are variables that point towards other variables. I could make a whole video separate on that, and I do plan to in the future when I make my full C++ course, which is in the works as I speak right now. But this is a memory optimization thing, and it can be really, really scary, except for the fact that you don't really need to think about this too much. Because when you use a method offered by the engine, like the get character movement. You can see it returns a pointer variable by the star next to the type here. So you don't really have to think about when and where to use pointers, it's just when the engine asks you to use a pointer variable, because the method that you're using returns a pointer variable, that's where you make a pointer. And when it's not giving you a pointer back, or not asking you for a pointer input, that's when you use a normal variable. It's really as easy as that. If you're working from scratch and making something in vanilla C++, there's a very good chance that this is a lot more difficult and you have to make the decision of when to use pointers and when not to use pointers. But using Unreal, you don't really get faced with that decision all that much. And even if this player here wasn't a pointer and I tried to compile this, it would just throw a compile error saying that it can't convert player to a player pointer. So at that point, just go back to wherever this variable is declared and change it into a pointer. It's literally as simple as adding a little star to it and now it's a pointer. Which gets us into the dot operator. And you might say, this is not a dot operator. And in C sharp it would have been, but the dot operator is split up into three different operators in C++, which I will admit is slightly annoying, but also will kind of help you skim through your code a little bit easier once you get used to it. So let's show you those three different operators. First, we have the normal dot operator. And the normal dot operator you use when you just have a data type, something like a uh, f vector here, let's call it just vector. This is not a pointer, this is just a normal variable. So if I want to get something out of this vector, I can use the dot operator, if I spell it correctly, that is and it gives me everything that is accessible in the f vector data type here, which is just what you're used to in C sharp. Now, if this were a pointer instead, which again, we can just simply do by adding a star to the data type, now it is a pointer, this no longer will work. Instead, what we'll use is this little arrow operator. And you can see now we can again get everything out of the f vector like we could before. And you will see that this is mostly what we use. Here we have a player pointer, arrow get character movement, which returns a pointer, arrow stop movement immediately. And the most wonderful thing is if you are used to just slapping a dot in between everything, uh, at least Visual Studio Code, but I do believe most IDEs will simply let you do that and it will convert it for you, as you can see right there. So while it is good to do get used to changing into using the proper operators so you're more aware of them. If you really can't be bothered changing your workflow because it's so burned into your muscle memory, Visual Studio Code at the very least will just have your back in that. That gets us to the last of the three different operators and that is this double colon. You use that when you have a static class and you wanna get something out of that. So in this case we have, for instance, gameplay statics and we want to play a sound at location, which is a method in gameplay statics. We're getting that directly out of the class, so we're using the double colon operator. So while this might take a little bit of getting used to, it's really not that bad either. Next up, we have the difference between everything just being in one C sharp file versus in C++ here, we have header files and C++ files. The header file, we use to declare everything. So this is literally just a list of telling the computer, this is everything that exists in this class. So we have 
all of our variables like our damage this is on a weapon and our knockback and the impact sounds and the impact particle system all those kind of things we declare them in the header file we don't actually use them for anything we just tell this header file these are the values that exist on this class and the same thing we do with functions. So I have an impact freeze function, an unfreeze function, and a begin overlap function, a setting hitbox function, and so on and so forth. All those you declare with their parameters in your header file. And then when you want to actually type out the code of what they should do, that you do in the C++ file. So we, here we have that hitbox we have the class name with the function name and then the parameter as we defined it and then here we type out the code of what this actually needs to do this might seem a little counterproductive having to type out everything twice if you want to change something you need to change it in two places while that is true it's also really nice to just have a file that is just literally a list of everything that is contained in a class rather than just having them all declared at the top of your class which is also a proper way of doing it in C sharp I personally do prefer this of course there's a million other little things here like uh, needing to forward declare certain types in your header file needing to use u property and u function to make things visible in the editor rather than just making them public like you might be used to in unity then again if you were just using public variables to make things visible in the editor in unity you were also kind of doing it wrong to begin with all that to say is I'm not saying that this is going to be a overnight thing. There's bound to be an adjustment period in which you're going to struggle, you're going to need to look at the documentation more, you're going to need to Google things more because you are learning a new engine. It is as simple as that. It's not going to be a pickup and just left off where you were in Unity. But as scary as people make C++ sound, it's not that bad in Unreal. As I stated before at the start of this video, C++ itself is a total bitch, but specifically in the Unreal implementation of it and all the extra tools that Unreal gives you, it really turns into just a slightly more spicy C sharp. And it definitely is worth giving Unreal a shot if you're looking for a different engine moving away from Unity. And hey, if you're watching this sometime after this video went up, I am working on a full C++ for Unreal course, which will be uploaded here on the channel. So if it's not uploaded yet, you can subscribe and keep up to date with that. If you want to have some more general knowledge of Unreal, I am also uploading, as I speak right now, a more basic tutorial series for Unreal that doesn't really go into the C++ side of things, but more so into the general engine side of things once that course is finished i will start a course specifically for c so if you're interested in that you can go watch that and subscribe to keep up to date with all the parts coming out over the next few months in that series and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thank you to eleanor for supporting at the cave digger tier on patreon